hello and welcome back to my channel today's video i have no idea what we are doing so i have four palettes here that i haven't used yet that i have shown in previous videos that i just haven't had a chance to play with yet and i really want to play with them because i want to try every single palette i get at least once especially because i bought three of them i got one in a boxy charm so essentially i bought it too but yeah i don't really know what look i'm going for today um it's gonna be a fun ride so if you guys just want to hang out put some makeup on watch me put makeup on uh figure out what i'm gonna do then just keep watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you leave and let's go ahead and get into the video so I've made my decision on the eyeshadow palette. I know some of you guys are probably like, girl, it's not the big of a deal, but um, I have had a couple of these palettes a little bit longer than others, and that's why I chose the one I did today. Um, I know I mentioned this in a, a previous video, and I also mentioned it on Instagram, but this is the Storybook Cosmetics Fairy Tales palette. This is actually a palette that a lot of you guys seemed really, really interested in. This is not the palette I'm going to be using today, but I will film with it. Um, I might even film with it tomorrow. It really just depends on how work goes and see if that can squeeze filming in tomorrow. But I will definitely end up using this. It will be in a future video, so just stay tuned for that. It's a gorgeous palette. I just don't... I'm not feeling this vibe today, if that makes sense. And the other two that I'm not filming with today are the Norvina palettes. This one is the Mini Pro Pigment Volume 2. Um, again, I will definitely use this. I purchased this uh, last month, and I just haven't had a chance to play with it yet. I haven't even swatched it yet, so I will get around to that. And the last one is the Pro Pigment Palette Volume 1. <clears throat> like this palette is stunning but I think I'm going to use this in Caitlin just dropped something I think I'm going to use this in my uh, cry acoustic video that's kind of what I'm feeling right now so just stay tuned for all of that because um, they will be coming it's just I'm not going to be filming them with them today just so you guys know I did not forget about them I will use them it's just not right now so, let me zoom you in here now that I've made my decision. So, the palette I am going to be using today is the uh, Norvina Mini Pro Pigment Palette Volume 1. It looks like this. It is absolutely beautiful. That is kind of what I'm feeling today. I know it's um, still very purpley and pink, but it's not, these same shades are not in the big version and I really am just drawn to like this purpley shade today. I don't know what it is. I just really want to use it. So that is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to take the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer to prime my eyes today. Okay, now that the eyeshadow primer is on, we are going to go into this beautiful palette. I have used um, all three of the other Norvina palettes that I didn't show in this video, because obviously those three I haven't used, and I am a big fan of them. Um, obviously, each palette is different. Every single palette ever is different, but so far, I really, really enjoy them. So I'm really, really excited to see if I like this palette as well. So I'm first going to take the shade A1, which is this shade right here. I think I'm going to use this as my transition color and then make it a little bit deeper. These are pressed pigments, so look at how pigmented. But that also means they can be a tad more difficult to blend than normal eyeshadows. I've spoke about this before in a couple of my videos. Um, once you 
learn how to use pressed pigments it's a walk in the park but it's getting to that point where you know how to use them uh, they do better if you pack them on and then blend just because that's how they're meant to be performed and swatching pressed pigments pressed pigments don't do well when they're swatched so that is something also to keep in mind they are definitely one of those products where you just have to really test them out on the eyes to see how they perform but look at this color this is such a unique color it's such a vibrant neon coral like it is so unique I don't think I have another shade in my entire collection that looks exactly like this one it is so stunning I'm really happy that I chose to play with it today and I'm just lightly blending out the edges not too crazy but that is kind of where we are right now this is very very pretty this is a perfect little springtime color I really really like it and it's not actually in the uh, big volume one because I'm looking at it <laughs> um, it's not actually in that one which is something I also like I know some people said that they didn't like that they weren't exactly the same but I like that because I have both obviously and I don't have duplicate shades I mean some of them are similar don't get me wrong the purples are very similar but I like that they're not exactly identical so that is very very nice Okay, that is a gorgeous color. Now I'm going to take the shade B3, which is this one right here. I'm gonna put that in my crease to begin deepening it up. Again, look at that pigment on that brush. And I'm just going to lightly The shade isn't much deeper, but it is adding a little bit of dimension, which is what I wanted. This is very spring. I guess I'm just over the winter time. It's been very, very warm here recently. Like today was in the 50s. Tomorrow it's gonna be in the 60s. So it's very, very warm. It's been beautiful out and I guess my eyeshadow is going to reflect that feeling of warmth and brightness. But yeah, once you have the color down, you can kind of blend, but pressed pigments don't do well uh, with a lot of layering. So um, you might have to touch up shades a little bit more than normal. It's not drastic, but it is just a little bit. They don't really like to be layered too much, especially a shimmer on top of a matte. That is like the biggest. If you, you can layer mattes a little bit, but um, shimmers on top of mattes, even with eyeshadow, it's, they don't perform the greatest, but really with pressed pigments, uh, it's just basically a no-go. You don't want to do that, but um, you can get it to work. It's just a little bit harder. So that is just something to keep in mind as well. The way I'm talking about these make me sound like I don't like pressed pigments. I love pressed pigments. They are some of my favorite things to work with, especially for a colorful eye look. They just pack a punch and I love that. So yeah, I do like them. Now I'm going to take the shade C1, which is this one right here, and I'm gonna use the same brush and just deepen that up a little bit more. And I'm taking I'm not gonna take this one as far in. I'm gonna stop like right there. Again, this is a very unique purple shade. Um, it's almost like a 
vibrant neon lavender purple like it's it's really really pretty I don't even think the camera is picking up how it actually looks like I don't think it's actually true to color but it is a very beautiful color in the pan it doesn't look like it would be this color like it looks like it'd be darker especially because i'm layering layering it on top of that really vibrant pink it's just making it pop which is really really pretty i quite like that i'm just gonna blend a little bit like that Blend up into the crease. It's very, very pretty. I quite like that a lot. And let's see if I can take a little bit of a denser brush just so I can have a little bit more concentration. Let's take C2, which is the one right next to that. And we're gonna put that in my crease as well. I'm not gonna pick up quite as much of this color. Just a little bit, just really focus it on the outer edge. Like, look at that, that is like a cerulean bluey, purpley, periwinkly, like it's it's all kinds of things. I don't even know how to describe this color. It is so unique. I don't think I have another purple that looks like this one. Like, it is just so unique, especially on the eyes. Like in the pan, it doesn't look like it would be this vibrant. Like, it is just so gorgeous. That is a very, very pretty color. I quite like that. I like all the colors I used today. So far, I've liked them all. They're blending amazing. And I quite like them. I love, love, love the shades. They are just so pretty. I have a hard decision. Do I wanna use this satiny matte like that or do I want to go in with a shimmer like this one this one would be a really pretty inner corner highlight on me I think I might use that one as an inner corner highlight because it is just so perfect for that or do I want to use the middle shade which is like a metallic pressed pigment which is this one on the lid it's duochrome like I don't know if you guys can really see on camera but it's like a pinky peach and it's really really pretty you can kind of see when I move my hand like that so I think I might pick that on because that is a gorgeous color so let's pick up a brush here and let's take B2 which is that middle shade right there that is the one that is like duochrome it is really, really pretty. Anastasia makes gorgeous like metallic shades, especially their pressed pigment formula. It is just so beautiful to apply. Like, look at that. Do you guys see that? Like, I don't, I don't have a glitter glue on, but I bet if you had one on, my favorite is the Too Faced glitter glue. I bet if you had that on underneath, it would just pop like no other. It would look stunning. The one bad thing about the pressed metallic like pigment formula is it's very, very soft. So it does create a little bit of fallout and it can crumble a little bit in the pan, as you can see here. That is pretty common even in normal eyeshadows if it's a really soft metallic type of formula. It doesn't bother me, but I know it does bother some people, so I thought I should mention it. I know this isn't technically a review, but um, I just like to keep you guys informed because not every single person knows that and they get really disappointed when they buy a product like this. So it is very, very soft and very pigmented and it applies easily, but because of that, it is so soft that it can crumble. So this is one of those palettes that can break pretty easily, at least that center shade. And that is not uncommon. My Lorac palettes are like that, and so are my Sephora Pros, um, my Pro Press pigments. So uh, just thought you guys should be aware 
And I'm gonna take C3, which is the shade right here. And I'm gonna put that in the outer corner. This is the deepest shade in the palette. I'm just gonna pop this is a gorgeous, like berry toned shade. Not super unique to my collection, this particular shade, but it is gorgeous. And I love the way that it looks against these other more vibrant colors. It's really, really pretty. We are going to try a new product today. This is the Caudalie. I don't know if I said that right. Um, cream Sorbet, Moisturizing Sorbet. Um, I have no idea what this is. I got it as a sample and it's like a moisturizing product. So I'm gonna try it today. I'm really intrigued. I've never tried anything by this brand. I don't even know if I pronounced it right, but um, it feels nice through the package. Okay, so it's white. I was expecting it to be like a pink color, maybe because of the packaging. But that is like what it looks like. It's very milk-like. <laughs> like it's, oh, it's very soft. Oh, a little bit goes a long way. I may have gotten out too much. <laughs> very, very soft. There's no directions on it. It literally just says moisturizing sorbet. So I don't know if it's like a mask or I'm assuming it's not. I'm assuming it's just a moisturizer, but this is very nice. It has a smell to it, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's not a bad smell, but um, there definitely is one there. But it's very, very moisturizing. I quite like that. It feels very, very nice. I might have to go out and buy a full size of this. I don't even know how expensive it is. Never even heard of it. But I got it as a sample, I wanna say for Christmas. Somebody gave it to me for Christmas. And I love that. It gives my skin like a radiance. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up right now. So, let's see here. Let's go to Sephora app. So it's $39. And I'm gonna add that to my basket right now, literally. It, okay, so I'm, I looked this up while my skin this is drying. It's a lightweight gel cream uh, packed with grape water and antioxidants to soothe and hydrate skin. It's for normal dry skin, uh, dryness, redness, and dullness and uneven texture. I think it did a great job of all of that. Um, oh, I didn't blend it in around my nose all the way. So, it's vegan. It says, a cool drink for thirsty skin. This white, lightweight gel cream uses hydrating organic grape water, calming chamomile and antioxidant rich grape seed to hydrate and soothe even the most sensitive skin. This ultra soothing formula calms irritation and reduces redness to hydrate skin. So, I agree with all of that. Like, it looks really, really nice. I think you can even wear this like in the mornings. It just gives this nice, beautiful glow to the skin. I'm quite impressed. So the 1.3 ounces, that's the bigger one is $39. And then they have the 0.66 ounces, which is just $20. Um, so I'm very, very impressed with this. Um, how do you, so it says, So it is clean as Sephora, which is good. And it is four and like a little slither stars. And it has over 1,000 views. So that is very nice. And I quite like that a lot. I use that entire uh, sample. So definitely gonna be purchasing a full size of this boy. It is so nice. And it's so rare when I find like a sample that I really, really love. And so far, I really, really like this. I just love the way my skin feels right now. It feels even better than when I use my Lubriderm Daily Moisturizer. That one is also really, really good, but this one just packs even more of a punch. So if you're extremely dry, like today, I'm very, very dry today, I would recommend this. And it really soaked in really fast. 
My skin feels very, very smooth, very soft. I really, really like that product. So that is a thumbs up for me. So I'm going to use a product that I haven't used in a hot minute. This is my favorite foundation ever. This is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in the shade Mont Blanc. This is my favorite foundation ever. If you have dry skin and you haven't tried this, I know it's $50, but it is so good. It is so worth the money. I know it's a ridiculously expensive foundation and I've heard people say that to me before. It's just so good. Like, I love it to death. This is one of those products that is very, very hyped about, but it's hyped about for a really good reason. It deserves its hype. 150 percent it is so stinking good and it covers everything if you have dry skin or like normal skin i have even seen people with oily skin like this but i don't know how uh it would last because it is dewy but if you have that and you want a full coverage foundation this is a great great option um i used this on my sister at her wedding i also wore it at her wedding and her wedding was in august it was hot it rained uh we were sweating and it lasted all day like this foundation is no joke i love it to death Obviously, that's why it's my favorite. <laughs> I haven't worn it uh, recently. I've been kind of testing out the Too Faced Born This Way and the ba Beauty Bakery one, but it is still my all-time favorite foundation. Never, never fear. It's still very much here in my collection. I just haven't really been using it because I've been testing out, like I said, just some other stuff. Cause you know, I wanted to try something new and I've always wanted to try the Too Faced Born This Way. I just never got around to purchasing it and I finally did. So I was just giving it its own little moment, but this one is definitely still my favorite. Sorry if you guys can hear that plane. I live in the city now. So now we have like outside noises. <laughs> But like, I'm looking at my skin in the mirror, and although I love this foundation normally, I just think that moisturizer underneath just gave it like this extra oomph. My skin was already kind of dewy and glowy before I put the foundation on, and that foundation just went on so smooth over top of that moisturizer. And it's not like clinging in any weird places. I quite like that. It does look funnier on my nose, but literally every single foundation I have does. So that is not the foundation, that's just the texture on my nose. I'm going to use this guy. This is a product that I haven't used in a minute either. This is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer in the shade Alabaster. You guys know I love this concealer, it is like it is my holy grail. I don't know what I was gonna say. It's like my holy grail, it totally is. Um, it completely has replaced my Merle Norman one. I still like that concealer. I just love this one even more. And I was not expecting to, but I love it. Let's take this. This is a product I've been testing out recently. Let me find a brush. This is the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Coconut Setting Powder. I've been trying this out recently and I'm a big, big, big fan of it. So I'm just gonna use that to set that concealer. I'm 
also going to set my face using that same powder. This foundation is tacky, so I would recommend setting it. to contour using the Makeup Revolution Bronze and Glow. It looks like this. I'm going to take the obviously contour shade and I'm going to use that to contour my cheeks and my jaw. mix these two bronzers together this first one is the physicians formula butter bronzer in the shade of light bronzer i'm going to mix that with a little bit of the Too faced pineapple sun bronzer so these two together Alright, and for blush, I'm going to go into the Too Faced Let It Snow Girl Blush Quad. And I'm going to take the shade Merry and Bright, which is this one right here. It's this gorgeous color. It's very peach. You guys can see it's very peach and very, very pretty. And I think it would just complement that first transition shade beautifully. I really like the way they look together. Highlight using the Bronze Glow again. I'm just gonna take the highlighter shade now. We're first going to take the shade C3, which is that one, and we're going to put it on my lower lash line. All right, now I'm gonna take the Moral Norman Soft Touch Eye Pencil in the shade Earthy. I'm gonna put that in my waterline. I'm going to take the Urban Decay Brow Blade in the shade brown sugar 
I've been currently obsessed with this brow pencil. It's just so good. All right, to highlight my inner corner, I'm just gonna take a white shadow, or my brow went up my inner corner, sorry. Ooh, that's very pigmented. I just took the one from the um, volume one palette and it's very pigmented. Um, I mean, I knew it was a pressed pigment, but that is a white shade. It's very, very pretty too. I quite like that. It's definitely a more of an intense brow bone highlight than I normally do, but I quite like it with this look. It's just a little bit different. So you definitely don't have to go this intense, but I quite like it. It's just a little bit different. Now I'm gonna take the shade A2, which is the shade right here, and I'm gonna use that to highlight my inner corner. Let's take the Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara today. It is such a gorgeous mascara, but I think it's just time to say goodbye. But in all honesty, I'll probably wait to film maybe as a clutter and then get rid of it. So my lips are kind of dry today. So I'm gonna take this product. Ooh, should I try this instead? I've never actually worn this lipstick, so I kind of want to try it. Yeah, let's try it on. It doesn't hurt to try it on. This is the Lorac. Alter Ego Lipstick in the shade Pastry Chef. It is this very, very light baby pink. And that is why I don't think it's gonna look right with this look, but I've never worn it, so I'm gonna try it on. Oh no. That is not gonna look right at all. It smells gorgeous. Smells gorgeous, smells beautiful. So I'm gonna go in with the Too Faced Melted uh, Chihuahua Lipstick. This is one of my favorite colors and I haven't worn it in a while just cause I don't really know why. I've been too obsessed with my Beauty Bakery one I guess. Although they're very similar in color. All right everyone, that is it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you leave. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload every single Tuesday and Thursday. Give this video a big thumbs up and I'll see you in my next video.